I know it was last minute, last second, right? <laughs> Good morning. Uh, and so we'll go to uh, the Zoom room. We'll keep it in the Zoom room. And I'll bring on from the Department of Public Health and Social Services. She's the PIO, uh, Janela Carrera. She's joined by Vince Munoz, who is, uh, Janela, refresh my memory again. Sorry. Path check. Path my check. My title? Yeah. Vince, Vince is, uh, is he with public health? No. This is uh, a path I, check I, developer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, uh, actually, uh, Vince, oh, good sorry, morning. Yeah, yeah, Vince, good morning, is Jason. I, I can actually vouch for Vince's uh, oh, computer God. savvy. He's right. he's actually been working with, with GovGuam uh, Systems Development for a very, very long time. So, Vince, yeah. to have your... You got drool, Jay. You got some drool. Yeah, there. so, Vince, to have your experience on this project and everything is, is greatly appreciated. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Jason. Cool. I, I like your Britney Spears headset. That's I want to get one of those. <laughs> Uh, Janella, we just start with the mayor's uh, concerns. I know that we had talked about this in Talafofo. We had this had been an issue uh, before you came on with the backlog. But the thinking is right that you guys just can't handle more than two hundred uh, tests in a day. So we shifted our focus again to tar targeted testing, um, and that's pretty much the the consensus for uh, limiting it to two hundred tests. For our community outreach um, you know we had that huge um, um, test you know the people that showed up uh, back in August and we didn't want a repeat of what happened back in August where we had that huge uh, turnout and it caused a, a backlog uh, and then delays in um, you know uh, relaying results to residents um, and so we wanted to focus more on targeted testing to high-risk groups, and so that's actually what we've been doing. Uh, so we haven't stopped targeted testing um, and outreaches. Uh, it, it just it just so happens that um, you know it's not in a, a community-wide setting, in a mass testing setting. Um, and so what we're doing is with the uh, community testing, for example, with uh, Telefofo. Um, and uh, also with the Umatic Mayor's Office, um, it's just sort of in batches. And then also we're continuing to do testing at our Northern um, Clinic, our Northern uh, Regional uh, Community Health Center. Uh, Janela, so with the mayor said he's already up to 122 and then I saw in the release, uh, I think that was from you guys, that there's also an email. So are we already maxed out with the 200? How many more slots do we have? What's the status on that? You know, I'm not sure where you got the email um, information. Uh, I, I don't believe we are taking a registration via email. Uh, I, I don't think we issued that in the JIC release. I was looking through our JIC release and I don't see that anywhere that we're taking registrations via email. Uh, we're taking registrations via telephone uh, through the Umatic Mayor's Office, um, but, but not via email. We, we did put in the JIC release that you can receive your results via email, but, but not registration via email. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make that point. Mm -hmm. Where did the 200 uh, far, cap come far, from? I mean, how was that determined that 200 was uh, the max that you guys were going to, to do tests, testing? I'm just curious. I think, you know, it's, it's a, it's a manageable number at this point. We wanted to ensure that, um, you know, based on that number, we wanted to make it a, a manageable number. So I think 200 um, at this point, uh, you know, when we bring in, um, when we ask people to register, it, it, it is a manageable number that we can start off with. Um, and so that's the number that um, our Department of Public Health uh, is using right now as a manageable number to start with. Okay. So, so we, we brought you guys on here because you guys wanted to talk about the Guam COVID uh, alert app. Um, how have, uh, I guess, the downloads uh, been going since uh, the press conference? Mm. Was, it a, was it a week ago, I think? Uh, just a little under a week ago, we launched last Thursday. I think Vince probably can answer that best uh, as far as um, monitoring the downloads so far. So I'll, I'll have Vince answer that question. Yeah, we've we've had over ten thousand downloads since the since the launch. 
Um, we've, you know, we, I think uh, when our outreach and marketing plan gradually kicks into gear, uh, we, we hope that our numbers go up. I mean, there, there's a reason and their goals on, on what we're trying to achieve. But, uh, you know, that's a good number considering this is mostly grassroots. There was very little done in the way, you know, of advertising and, and all mm -hmm. of that. But we are, <laughs> Janela and, and Monica Guzman, who, who lead that effort, can probably talk a little bit more about that you know, if they like. And, and if we could just talk about why it's important for people to, to download uh, this app. Sure. So, you know, um, and, and Vince has talked about this as well. When people download uh, an app on their phone, you know, whether it's for social media or games, educational purposes, typically when they download an app, um, it's meant for the user. You, you download an app that's meant for, for the personal use. It's meant to benefit yourself you know, Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, those beauty apps, whatnot, um, educational purposes, you, you download it for personal use. This app is different. Uh, when you download the Guam COVID alert app, an exposure notification app, a contact tracing app, you're really downloading it to benefit the public. You're, you're downloading it because you're contributing to something uh, that's greater than yourself. You're downloading it to benefit a community, to benefit um, your friends, your family, uh, people that you you may never even meet. So I think that's uh, really the, the ingenuity behind this app is that um, you're contributing to something that will save a life, that will protect people um, that will prevent infections. And so I think that's that's really um, the difference between this app and the apps that we're so used to using on our phones. And um, on top of that, when you download this app, you, you hardly ever really interact with it. The only time you interact with it is if you test positive and you choose to enter that report into the app, or if you get an alert that you may have been exposed to somebody. Uh, other apps that you use, like Facebook, you're on it constantly. Uh, if you want to read the news, you're on it constantly. Um, Instagram, you're on it constantly. So this app, you hardly ever interact with it, and yet you're you're still contributing to something that's really greater um, in the long run that benefits people. So I think that's really the difference between this and other types of app. And that's why it's a great app to use because you're helping people, you're helping your community. You know, Janelle, I, I hear uh, people talking and one of the, the things they bring up with the app is the privacy concern, right? And I know that you guys really uh, addressed at length that issue during the press conference. But if you could, again, for those uh, people, I just heard it last night. Oh, you download the app, they're going to track you. They're going to know who you're going to vote for, this and that. So... Um, if you could just maybe address and maybe Vince is you as a technical guy, is it real? The privacy concerns, is it real? Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting when, <clears throat> when people, um, are, are really concerned about privacy, uh, it, when they talk about the privacy concerns with, uh, with, with the Guam COVID alert app, um, and, and yet sometimes they don't realize that when they use Facebook. Uh, Instagram, you know, Facebook um, has less privacy when it comes to using the app uh, and e even other apps, you know, there's less privacy uh, when, even when you're using your um, banking app. Um, and, and this app has a lot more privacy. You can turn off your location services and this app will still, um, you know, will still run even in the background. Um, and, and I'll let Vince talk a little bit more about privacy. You know, he's, he's more the tech guy and, and was part of the developer team uh, when, when this app was um, being uh, engineered. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think anybody in the tech world knows the most interesting thing about this app was uh, it was a joint effort uh, with Apple and Google, uh, two big, you know, obviously in, in the smartphone mobile world they're the biggest competitors but they came together for this and and because they were building an app that was going to do uh, 
exposure notification. There is no question that privacy they knew at, at the forefront was going to be a, a concern and that and they were going to get heavily scrutinized. Mm. Uh, you know, even uh, the ACLU, who who's an extreme uh, watchdog for privacy, reviewed this and, and, and they they felt that it mitigated the worst privacy concerns. So um, when as we were developing the app, this was unusual unlike any other app we've ever done. Every single step uh, was meticulously reviewed. Uh, normally, you know, when you submit an app, you, you get, you know, you, you submit, you go into like a flight test, maybe beta, and then they you go one t- one last time and, and it gets out. This this was not like that at all. And this is very unique, you know. Uh, you, you know, you can only implement one app per jurisdiction, uh, that meaning one app in California and one app on Guam and one app in most most countries. And, you know, we are the first territory. Uh, we've beaten many countries. We probably could have been the first in the U.S. if, if, we, if we really wanted to. Yeah. So I, um, I think you guys got a lot of unique. Got to have yeah. a better sell than, oh, you're already giving your info in the Facebook. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> oh, you well, guys are TikTok and, uh, already. Well, well, no, we'll see. Well, Vince, <laughs> on, on that note, I was hoping you can really emphasize, like, what I kind of see as, as, you know, a tech guy as the main advantage of this. Because, you know, we talk so much about about altruism and taking care of our communities and our neighborhood and our family and our island. And, you know, in Nafa Malik, this app, because of the network effects and the more people that use it, the more valuable it becomes to our health and well-being yeah. is really a digital expression of Inafa Mali, correct? Uh, it's quarantine management. I mean, you think about it. When the epidemic gets at, at the level that we are, and I, I think we're the top per capita infectious uh, number of infections, something that effect. I wish Dr. Thane, by the way, was here <laughs> and the rest of the team. But right. uh, but yeah, it's quarantine management. How, mm-hmm. how, do you, how do you find a way to say those of you that uh, either that potentially could have uh, uh, be infected, you know, because 50% of the spread of this disease happens during the asymptomatic phase. So you have no idea. And how's a contact tracer gonna find somebody if a person that tests positive that they investigate says, well, I was in a market or, you know, I was at a gathering. I don't know everybody there. It's impossible. So that, that's really what this does. It does quarantine management. And, and um, you know, it allows us to set aside those who, who can say, hey, I, I may have been exposed. Let me set a few days. It allows public health to throttle that, to be able to give them an assessment to just, you know, to help them determine when they should come in for testing right. and, and when, you know, they should just stay at home. Can, those can, sorts of things. can you guys just really quickly and just in simplest terms explain mm-hmm. just how this works? You sign up for the app and then if you test positive, you you go into the app and say i tested positive and then it just lets everybody else know can you kind of explain this in just um non um technical terms you want to do that Janana? sure so so if you have the app downloaded to your phone uh and say for example you test positive uh somebody from public health a public health official or a, a trace investigator will contact you let you know that you've been uh, diagnosed positive uh, with COVID-19. They'll ask you if you have the app downloaded to your phone. Uh, If you tell them, yes, I have it, they'll ask you if you want to enter that positive diagnosis onto the app. Uh, And if you say yes, they'll let you know, okay, so I have a code ready for you to enter. That code only lasts for 15 minutes and that's for security reasons. Uh, If you're ready, then they'll give you the uh, randomized code um, and then you'll enter that code into the app. Once you enter the code, the, uh, the app itself will say, thank you for keeping your community safe. Then you're done. That's all you do. Um, that code will go out into a server. It's a Bluetooth uh, beacons that will alert any person who's been in contact with you for the last 14 days through their phone. Uh, no personal information is ever shared. so. You don't know who's been in contact with you, and those people uh, don't know who this person is either. And that alert will go out, and 
when they get that alert through their phone and it'll say, uh, you may have been exposed to somebody within the last 14 days who tested positive. You open up your phone and it'll give you uh, recommendations and what to do next. They're called next steps. Those uh, recommendations will tell you, um, check yourself for any symptoms uh, such as you know A, B, and C. And if you do develop symptoms, here are some phone numbers to call uh, to our clinic and any of our clinic um, partners. And then it'll also give you a GMA directory for all other clinics, whether they're partners or not, that you can contact. Thank you. Um, and then uh, if you do develop symptoms, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, if you do develop symptoms, um, you know, then you can also schedule for an appointment to get tested. Thank you. Uh, let me just break in here real quick, Janelle. It's 804 to our viewers on KUAM uh, TV. Thank you guys so much. Let's go uh, and jump over to our KUAM News Facebook live feed uh, where you can Bluetooth with the TV and you put it up on for everyone to watch. You know what I mean? Uh, or right here on the radio. Do it the old fashioned way, man. Tried and true. The Breeze, KUAM FM. Uh, got near we're 93.9. Good morning, 804. Hi, KUAM TV. Bye, KUAM TV. Uh, we're back in it with uh, Janella from uh, Public Health. Janella, we're so, it's so backed up, but I just had a couple uh, questions. First, if you could, uh, there was that statement that came out of the Speaker's office about uh, possible furlough of 80 employees at uh, Public Health. We didn't get anything official from the agency or uh, Adeloup, but can you tell us anything about that? So, you know, um, right now, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're working with, with BBMR, um, you know, they're the fiscal team that's going to be reviewing all possible angles. Um, I, there's really nothing much that I can say as far as, you know, the, the budget. Um, I, I really could not tell you much more. I, I'd rather defer to BBMR and um, our uh, fiscal team at, um, Adeloup, uh, we're going to review it um, at all costs uh, as much as possible. We're going to avoid cutting personnel, but you know, and work within our means for our budget. Uh, but I, I, I'll defer to BBMR, and I'm sure that our department is working with them to review the budget and, and all options possible. So, was public health not aware? Was this, that it was not on their radar? that the potential for these 80 furloughs was was real or was there and because you know this budget was passed uh what, august 31st or something like that i would, would have thought that you know the public health director or somebody would have been shouting from the rooftops that you know hey we've got 80 furloughs that are that are possible if we don't get um i guess uh if the governor's budget doesn't pass uh, you know, I, I know that um, Director Arts and Augustine has always been in constant communication, constant contact with um, with Adeloup, with BBMR, with the governor's office, um, constantly reviewing the budget, constantly communicating as far as what um, all possibilities are. Um, I, I know that he was very busy in the last uh, couple of weeks, few days, especially as the um, budget discussions drew closer and closer. Um, but again, um, you know, as far as the budget is concerned, as far as any potential furloughs or potential layoffs are concerned, uh, you know, I'd rather uh, give Art that, um, that, yeah. that discussion, that, that um, you know, that floor and, and BBMR as well. Are you okay? Are you yeah, good? I wanted yeah. to go back to the app, but did you have something Yeah, else? I just wanted to ask about the, I got a call from one of my old neighbors in Interon. Uh, Janela, what can you tell us about the Southern Public Health Center? Guy called and he was pretty irate. He said it's been closed. They don't want to have to go up to the Northern one. So what, what is going on again with the Southern Public Health Center? You know, uh, it, it is still closed. There were some issues that we were having with the um, air conditioning mm. unit there. Uh, with the facilities there. And I know uh, last time I had, um, we had discussions on it, we were waiting for some parts. Uh, I believe that they had arrived um, and we were working to, um, 
to fix the issue, but I think that inspections were still being conducted. Uh, I think we're pretty close to getting it fixed and up and running. Um, it's just a matter of ensuring that, uh, you know, the AC is running and inspections are done. So hopefully we will get it back up and running pretty soon and able to open it so that we can um, use that and, and open it up for the public. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard instances in which uh, people have been contacted by public health that, you know, they tested positive uh, for COVID, but then um, they were informed that they uh, that there, there was a mistake that was made, that they're actually not positive. Do you guys keep track of that? Do you have any numbers um, regarding that where mistakes like that were made? Uh, I'm not too familiar, you know, regarding that, but if, if that is the case, um, so you're saying positive, but later was, was not positive. Um, right. That, that I, I public health had made that. a mistake that they had notified and, in, you know, individuals that they were positive and then, um, oh, my bad. Um, sorry. <laughs> right. Have you guys ever, have you heard of any instances of that? Do you guys keep stats on that? Do you guys look into things like that? Have you received complaints about that? Um, I'm not too familiar with that. I have to look into that. Okay. So if, all right, then if, say, that does happen, how how do you take that back? Like you give somebody the code and it's like you're positive and then you input the code and then later on a phone call comes in and it's like, oh, sorry, you're not. You're not really positive. What do you do? What does this app do? Well, in that instance, if um, if that is the case, if that is in fact the case, of course, we would have to investigate it uh, completely. Uh, you know, but again, I'm not aware of something like that occurring. No, no, no. I'm just um, saying it would. I'd, I'd have to look into that. Yeah. If somebody is given this code, right? Public health gives the code to the person that tests positive, and then that person inputs the code into the app. What happens if you, you, public health calls that individual and says, um, you know, I'm sorry, but you're not actually positive. What, how do you uninput yeah, how, it? Yeah, what do you do? You reverse hack it? That's probably, Vince? You know, that's a good, that's a good question. That's you why know, she asked and, it. And the challenge is, is the privacy preserving, you know, architect of this, of this app makes that really difficult because once we upload keys, we have no idea uh, who that is. I mean, Apple and Google designed it that way. Mm -hmm. It was intentionally designed that way. The only way for us to do that is is to put it in in, in sort of a, a log. So that is something we are exploring. We are talking, you know, about. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, this this uh, the Google Apple uh, uh, exposure notification protocol has only been issued. I want to say um, I say five weeks now for the first installation in the US, uh, which was in Virginia. Prior to that, it was the Swiss who really started this venture and the Germans and the Irish. And so um, there's there are other things uh, that, you know, that would be, you know, that would make the app run better. But the problem is because of the privacy preserving, like you cannot, you not, can't capture GPS locations. Right. You can't use your app camera while the app is up. So there's there's no way to get a, around that, you know. Uh, one one thing I do want to mention though uh, about the app, you know, that uh, for Guam, other, aside from the benefits we get from quarantine management, aside from the fact that, you know, this is really not, uh, you know, those are concerned about privacy. This is actually empowering to the user. The user actually has the opportunity to do something about COVID. Uh, so I, I wanted to make sure that they understood that. But mm -hmm. if we achieve an adoption rate of over 38%, we will be the biggest story in COVID tracking in the world. Wow. Google will make sure everybody in the world knows about this are we going to get money for it <laughs> well it'll probably brand us as the safest community in the world uh we'll be like new zealand except even better because who's gonna who's the biggest marketing company in the world it's gonna be google apple mm -hmm. and this is their protocol and uh I, I would say that the benefits that are there actually also come in other ways like for example uh uh 
uh, there's an Institute for Technology and Global Health that reached out to us now to help do some research on adoption rate, not just for what's happening here, but to look at it from a broader perspective so that other states, other countries that start to implement this will have some info and some guidelines, you know, some, 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 some lessons that they can learn from that. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're taking right. this opportunity to work with the university, you know, have our university be part of that research effort. And, you know, most of these uh, people that are doing this, this institute is, is born out of people from Harvard. So it really kind of, you know, uh, allows us to contribute in so many ways. Uh, if we beat that rate, we're going to really help the world uh, learn how to beat and manage uh, the COVID uh, infection rate. Thank you. Thank you, know, thank you. Yeah, and if I can, if, if I can add to that, you know, it, 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 we can set an example, you know, as Guam being, as Vince had mentioned, as he pointed out, you know, we set an example to others, you know, if we beat that rate, they'll look to Guam and they'll ask, you know, how did Guam uh, beat that rate? Um, and, and they'll use our method uh, and, and, you know, uh, use it in their jurisdictions. So we have an opportunity uh, to help other jurisdictions as well. And I think that's also important um, to show them that, you know, because we're a tight knit community, we're a small community. And so we have this unique opportunity um, to use this app, not only to help ourselves, our community, our people, but to also help other jurisdictions uh, beat COVID-19. Last question, Brie. <laughs> I know it's too, maybe, maybe it is too soon. It's, it's been live for what, about a week. Have you guys, uh, um, noticed anything that maybe you should, should tweak or were there any bugs or anything like that, Vince, or everything seems to be running smoothly? I think probably the biggest thing sometimes is, uh, people's font, you know, when they have this huge font and, the screen comes on, you know, you have to scroll down because you, you know, that kind of blows up. But uh, other than that, it's, it's been pretty good. I think our biggest concern, I would say Janella Wright and everyone is people's concern about, uh, about privacy. And, you know, and uh, I, I, the only thing that I can say, it's been very scrutinized. The ACLU has looked at this. Many people have looked at this and I understand their concerns, uh, but the only way to be able to put out an app where you're sh sharing something about your exposure or the exposure uh, of yourself to uh, 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 the COVID virus is you're going to have to share information and, and you're going to have to trust and you're going to have to trust that the people at Google and Apple and uh, we, the app developers and, uh, and uh, you know, MIT and everyone else that's involved in this and the government is protecting your privacy. Mm -hmm. just, this is a really hard app to do. If I did this as a local company myself, I'd have no shot. They would never trust me. It really requires a, a lot of a, a lot of different uh, people to come together at a different level. So mm -hmm. uh, I hope people understand how this is, like, like they said, is really about protecting others. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I, yeah, and it, hopefully this community comes together. Yeah, and, and if I can just add, add that, you know, this, what, the purpose of this app is really to, to aid our contact tracers, uh, aid um, public health in, in quarantine management. It's, we want to use it as a tool to end lockdowns, to end quarantine, to contain the spread of, of COVID-19 in our community. Um, you know, it's not to, to track people's movements, to track locations, uh, to, um, you know, find out what, where people are. Um, you know, our goal is really to contain the spread of COVID-19. We want COVID-19, uh, you know, out of this community as much as anybody else. Uh, we want to end lockdowns as much as anybody else. We want to stop quarantine as much as anybody else. Uh, and this is one of the tools, um, you know, in, in our in our toolkit. Um, so we're we're looking at all possible resources uh, to do that, and this is one of them. Um, and, and whatever we can do, you know, we've been speaking with 
doctors, nurses, whatever we can do to help them, contact tracers, you know, they're overworked, uh, they're overwhelmed, and, um, you know, we really want to help them, and this is one of the ways that we can do that. Um, you know, Guam COVID Alert, it's really meant to help the community contain that spread mm -hmm. and, and really just want to encourage the community to download this app. Um, we're not doing this to, to you know, um, track movement. It's really just so that we can, um, you know, find out the numbers, help contact tracers, especially with uh, those that we're unable to reach. Mm -hmm. And so just again, just really can't emphasize enough mm -hmm. to encourage the community to download this app. All right. Well, we thank you guys for your time. We've got to move uh, our show along. We really appreciate yeah. uh, um, everything you guys are doing. So yeah. thanks a lot, Janella, Vince. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Vince. Maybe next time you can That's play a little number for us on the piano. <laughs> Sorry, I just see a piano. I want to play. My daughter, section. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, stay safe guys Janelle thank you and stay you're safe. right I, I went back you. and I, I think I was I saw the phone number for the Umatic Mayor's office and I did see that there was an email that if you get tested you want to get your results uh, via email right so th thank you for clarifying that not a problem thanks Chris okay thanks we'll see you guys you. see you right. uh, Vince see you Janella. we got to take a really quick break um, we just we were slated to get Superintendent John Fernandez on but with so much backup we're jumping him to tomorrow Jay okay Okay, calling an audible, calling an audible, calling an audible.